So, I've probably made two dozen videos or more about Shasta County citizen journalists, Shasta Anon, Patriot News Cafe, all these same people that go by all these different names and use all these different fake accounts. And I tell people that, but I don't really go into detail on, on how and why I either know or very strongly suspect that some of these people are just different iterations of these same, like, four people. Shasta County Citizen Journalists, they started out in, I want to say, like, 2021. Uh, remember back during COVID, it was Lori Bridgeford and Rich Gallardo, his twin brother, identical twin brother, Eric Gallardo, showing up to all these vaccine clinics and harassing the people that worked there. Like, there's so many videos about it. I've posted so many videos. You can probably just search YouTube for these videos at this point. They were doing that, I believe, before I actually ever had a single interaction with either of them, from my knowledge. And then so uh, COVID shut down Reading and a lot of parts of Reading, and Sprouts was requiring masks to enter the store. Not vaccinations, mind you. They were just requiring masks. That's it. You could come in and buy your groceries and leave with your groceries as long as you just simply wore a mask for the like five to ten minutes that you would be in the store. And then you could leave and take your mask off and go home and also have groceries. But no, um, these people decided that a culture war was more important than public safety. So all these same people, the people that at that point then became the red, white, and blue print, they showed up to Sprouts. They had all these signs talking about their freedoms and, you know, COVID is a hoax. And they weren't allowed to go into Sprouts, which, by the way, is private property. And so since they weren't allowed in because they weren't following the rules of the owner of the property, uh, they forced their way in. They forced their way in this is, you know, this is Rally Sally Raposa, Terry Raposa. This is um, Lori Bridgeford. This is Rich Gallardo. This is this is all the people that I've been talking about for the last, like, three years, but just before I started talking about them. But I also showed up with Marv uh, and several other people to Sprouts because we knew this protest was going to happen, and we brought boxes of masks and, you know, they labeled us counter-protesters, and that's kind of what we were doing, but still in a positive way, because our whole thing was, we're not here to stop your protest, we're just here to basically document it, but also provide free masks, so that you can go in and get your groceries. But no, they all got mad. That's when the first thing happened between Carlos Zapata and I, uh... He got in my face because I had seen him on the news saying that there's going to be blood in the streets at a board meeting. And I really wasn't paying that much attention to politics that much at that time, like local politics. But all I saw was a guy threatening the citizens of my community. And that pissed me off because I don't like bullies. And so then I just started making you know memes about Carlos. And then so he came to know who I was because I was starting to sort of blow up with the uh, the memes and the Buford White character, which was initially designed to, for me to directly make fun of Carlos. It's not anymore, to be honest. And honestly, I'm going to be honest with everybody right now. I get along perfectly fine with Carlos Zapata now. We have mended our fences. I can't explain, you know, why he did the things he did during that time. But you'll notice he hasn't been doing that for quite a while now. And uh, yeah, so we, we get along fine. And that's all I really have to say about that. But that was the first interaction that we had that was like negative because he was kind of walking up close to me as he was ready to lead the charge into a, a maskless grocery store adventure during a global pandemic. And so I saw him and I believe I said like the first words. I was like, you're Carlos Zapata, right? And he was like, yeah. And then so I was like, yeah, domestic terrorism is pretty cool. You know, because of the blood in the streets thing. Like, I don't feel like I'm wrong for thinking that, you know. Blood in the streets, like, you know, that's just... I don't think anybody really, really wants or needs that. 
And so I called that out, and then he got he got pretty upset. And then a couple of the other people around, you know, came and got in my face too. And I was there with Marv and several other people. And we, you know, there was no, you know, physical altercation or anything. Just, you know, people shit talking. And then that's when Lori Bridgeford was there. And I had no idea who she was at this point, what her name was, who she was. All I know was there were two women that were about the same height and they were wearing stupid hats that looked the same. And they both were holding picket signs, you know, against the anti-COVID shit. I forget the name of the other lady, but at one point there was like a commotion and the other lady who wasn't Lori Bridgeford smacked somebody with her sign, like on purpose. She hit somebody with her sign. And so because these are all strangers to me, you know, Lori was there and this other lady who also had glasses and a stupid hat and was similarly dressed and a similar age, you know, um, I, I don't know if someone told me that the person who was hitting people with signs, their name was Lori Bridgeford, but like I didn't go and post that. Like I didn't make a post that was like, Lori Bridgeford was out there smacking people with signs, and I just want to make sure Shasta County knows that. I didn't do that. What had happened was they were rolling out vaccines to the tribal clinic, the the clinic um, over just past Shasta Regional. And uh, Lori Bridgeford and Corey Allen, he goes by Hermit Strawman, he disappeared, and a couple other people were out there with megaphones yelling at all these people in line to get their vaccine outside of the tribal clinic. And they were yelling a bunch of racist shit too. This video is still up on YouTube. I filmed this whole thing, but I, I had seen either a video that somebody had sent me of them out there doing it, or like, I don't know, I forget how I found out it was happening. But I remember that I found out it was happening, and so I went down there, and that's where that whole video of me, you know, yelling at Lori Bridgeford while she's got her megaphone, and the people in line behind me just trying to, like, get their vaccine are, like, yelling at them also, go away, go away. Other people are talking shit to them. And we got in this heated, you know, back and forth, mostly between me and Lori Bridgeford and Corey Allen. Corey Allen was just yelling at me on a megaphone, and so was Lori. And I didn't have a megaphone. I was just yelling loud enough to be louder than their megaphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of tension. And then at one point, Lori Bridgeford says something to me because I had a pair of red vans on. A pair of red vans that were on sale at Journeys for 20 bucks, so I got them. <laughs> That's why I had those vans. And then she yells out, he's a pedophile. He's wearing red shoes. Pedophile, because he's wearing red shoes. And I'm like, what? Where do you even pull that out of? First of all, you don't just call somebody that. Like... I didn't grow up that way to just be like, oh, you can just go out in public and disagree with somebody and just start screaming that they're a pedophile. That has never been a sane thing that I would ever think to do. But she did that fucking shit to me. And so I think my response to that was like, oh, yeah, well, at least I don't hit people with my signs. You know, I referenced the sign thing because I still legitimately thought that it was her that was the one hitting people with signs. It turns out it was the other lady. I don't actually care about that. I don't care about that at all. But that is what she latched onto. She was like, he's telling people that I'm hitting people with signs. Yes, that is one thing you were correct about, Lori. That is one thing she was right about. Because I accidentally mistook Two anti-vaxxers wearing the exact same thing, holding similar signs in a very heated moment, and accidentally got them mixed up. But no, she latched onto it, and she started sending me these um, cease and desist letters that were just handwritten, you know. And I filmed the whole video just tearing one of them up on camera, because... She has no authority over me, and I don't think she understands that. And the fact that she thinks she has this authority over me is one of the things that I feel confirms the fact that she's fucking racist. Because she actually thinks she has authority over me. I mean, explain it, you know? And so that was what she started going after me for. And then uh, she started going to all the board meetings... 
and using all of her three minute speeches to talk directly about me to the point where she got herself so flustered. Like she would do this and then I'd make a video making fun of the things she said about me, but like just on the internet, you know? And then she would take that as harassment and she would clutch her fake pearls. And then she would feel like more of a victim to the point where this kept happening. She would go and slander me publicly. And then I would go online on my phone and make fun of her slandering me. And then she would feel even more and more like a victim to the point where she actually filed a restraining order against me. Yes. So I went to that restraining order hearing. I accepted that service. I actually went to the sheriff's office to get the paperwork. They didn't even have to serve me. I filmed the video doing that too. And so I showed up to court dressed nice. I did not have representation. I did not have a lawyer. It was me versus Lori Bridgeford and her witnesses. And I didn't bring any witnesses. She brought Rich Gallardo. She brought Jim Burnett. And she brought someone else. I can't, some other inconsequential person that I can't remember. But I questioned all of them. And I was able to show the judge the compilation of exhibits of all the times that she's spoken about me at a public government meeting many times when I wasn't even there. And the judge was just, what am I looking at here? And you're the one filing the restraining order? So he dismissed it. He denied the restraining order. They lost that. They lost that hard. You know, they thought they were going to finally get me into court for all my harassment and slander, which was essentially just their own words and my commentary on them. And somehow that's harassment and slander. Uh, and requires a restraining order. And so in their minds, they've just been building this, like, vendetta against me. Like, we have to take Nathan down. And so I have learned so much about these people, how they talk, the things they'll say, the way they word things. Like, I, that's how I can identify one of the ways a lot of these fake accounts that I know are ran by Rich Gallardo. You know, it's not just... It's not just speculation uh, in bad faith where I'm like, I want this to be true, so I'm going to believe this to be true. No, I have so many things that I don't ever explain to people why I have like an, a 92% hunch on who this person is because I actually study the things that actual person has said. And most people aren't smart enough to figure out how to speak anonymously different than they speak normally. And a lot, of, a lot of key words, a lot of specific, unique phrases, especially that Rich Gallardo uses across his fake accounts. And so they have always been jealous of um, Donnie Chamberlain in a news cafe because they've, always, they've called themselves citizen journalists. They thought they were citizen journalists when they were harassing COVID clinics. And so here's the thing. Real journalism focuses on finding facts and using legitimate, verifiable sources and having proof when you present an article or a story so that people aren't just left wondering, well, how is any of this proven? A real journalist proves that during the story. These people don't do that because they're not real journalists. What they are doing is they're using the term journalist or pretending to be press to justify what is nothing more than harassment and bullying. That's all it is. And so they wear a big old press badge and a, uh, you know, a bright uh, vest and they tell everyone their press and they wear a little, a little uh, media badge so they can go behind the little thing at the board meetings like Lori and, and Robert Exter do. They're not press. They don't publish articles. They don't have sources that are not anonymous, you know, because that like nobody is actually willing to go be interviewed by them with their real identity. <laughs> so Shasta Anon is their little YouTube channel that they've made to anonymously defame people that they don't like because of sociopolitical reasons locally. I've tried to avoid talking about this or you know, that much because I don't want to advertise for it. But at this point, after how long it's been up and how long I have actually talked about it, the fact that they're not growing in subscribers, 
I get the feeling like, well, now people actually know about this, but they still don't want to follow it. So now I feel like I can actually talk about it. Robert Exter proclaims to be a video specialist, a video editor, someone that, you know, is good with creating and editing video. And he is Laurie Bridgeford's cameraman. He's that old guy at the board meetings, always following Laurie around with a camera on a tripod. That's Robert Exter. He has a, another YouTube channel where he self-identified, and the content on that channel is so similar to the Shasta Anon one. And then the other thing is the, <laughs> this is how much I pay attention to. The graphic design of the logo of Shasta Anon is the same exact type of graphic design, AI generated, but with the same AI filter that Laura Hobbs used during her campaign. It's also the same exact graphic style that Robert Exter uses on his self-identified YouTube channel. You all of a sudden see Laura Hobbs showing up to the Shasta County Elections Office with a fake citizen journalist press badge with Rich Gallardo. Like, this is why these people can't be anonymous because we keep too many receipts. We really do. This is already almost a 20 minute video and I'm still not done. Rich Gallardo, Lori Bridgeford, Laura Hobbs, Robert Exter, and potentially Rich's twin brother, Eric Gallardo. That is, in my mind, 99.9% .9 chance of what Shasta County citizen journalists are, Shasta Anon, a Patriot News Cafe, and all these little fake accounts that are flooding these little groups and flooding KRCR comments, but I notice the things they're saying, and I also can see who the people that I suspect them to be are also saying. Certain, like, very unique things. Things that only this person basically says, and now all of a sudden this fake account is saying it. Say one of these fake accounts is steady commenting and arguing with someone, you know, on like a KRCR article. You can then go to that person's main account and then basically compare all the times they were busy on a fake account to dead spots on their real account. <laughs> I hope I didn't just give away a secret there, but honestly, I don't care because these people are probably too fucking stupid to figure out a way around that. <laughs> and if they do, they can just dedicate more of their time <laughs> to being fake pieces of shit. Shasta County Citizen Journalists, these four to five people are behind so much of the bullshit in some way that has happened in Shasta County. And it's not like they're well-liked people from either side. Like Laura Hobbs, for example, you know, she ran for supervisor and super lost. But even during that, remember their, like half their group, Reading Patriots, was all fighting against Laura Hobbs. And the other half was fighting like, you know, against Dan Sloan and they were all attacking each other. Like there's no loyalty among these people. I've had to pay way too much attention to all this stuff. And what I know now will never be forgotten. And I guess at this point, I just want to pass it along to other people because my overall advice to anybody, you know, that has to deal with these these type of people, the the incredibly loud minority of people around here, what absolutely works, because what they want is fear. They want to intimidate you. They want to make you feel afraid. They want to make you feel harassed. Literally don't be. <laughs> Laugh at them. Ridicule them. Look at them the way Kamala Harris looks at Donald Trump during a debate when he's saying that immigrants are eating pets. They can't stand ridicule. That's what freaks them out. I've seen tons of examples of it. They just want to be on top, but also somehow the victims of everything. Their minds don't work correctly. And again, what works the best is do not succumb to what they want. Just laugh at them, shrug them off, make them feel small and stupid because that's their biggest fear of feeling small and insignificant. But that's exactly what they are. So remind them, 
if you have to.